But as they head off to the start line, it is Sweden who are getting a really good clean start and already at 25 knots, safely up onto the foils and screaming away towards that first mark. It's very early to say, obviously we have a three race day, but whether the light air foils versus the heavy air foils played a part in that pre-start. Certainly Sweden with port tack entry in the, in the pre-start, they came in from the left-hand side of the starting line. They got to pick and choose the time that they wanted to go back toward the line far more effectively than Emirates Team New Zealand. Therefore, we got a good little lead coming into mark one. So the wind speed may only be eight or nine knots, but as we've seen, these boats well capable of moving at speeds of uh, four times the wind speed and round the first mark go Artemis Racing, the Swedish team here in Bermuda, setting the pace in the early exchanges as Emirates Team New Zealand follow them around the mark. It's amazing how much the good old fashioned weatherman comes into play on a day like today. As Joey Newton reported, for those of us who just joined the America's Cup in this new crazy version of the America's Cup, you can have two different types of dagger boards. And those dagger boards, think of the lift on a plane. If you're trying to lift a plane off the tarmac in, in, at lower speeds, you would have longer wings. Well, same thing with these guys. If they're trying to lift these boats out of the water, which is so crucial at lower speeds, lighter wind conditions, you want your big wings on. Artemis has them in today. Team New Zealand doesn't. So let's get a, a, an idea from Joey Newton exactly how late you can leave that decision. Joey, what, what's the what's the protocol here? Because you may be having to make decisions at what eight nine o'clock in the morning for for wind conditions that are very different come two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, that's right, Ellie. Um, you can't just snap your fingers and change the boards in, in a matter of minutes in these boats. There's quite a bit of work to be done. So these guys are making the decision. They'll start talking around 7:30 in the morning. Um, 8 o'clock in the morning, they'll have a tentative decision. The boats go in the water around 10, so everything pretty much needs to be decided by 9. So you have to have a, a huge amount of faith in your weather team to get these calls right so you can put the right boards in the boat for the day. Let's the look at the the meteorologist is probably the, one of the key men in the camp. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And based on all of us talking about them right now, they're all looking for a raise as we speak. <laughs> Well, it's pretty tight out there, not a whole lot to choose between them, and uh, Emirates Team New Zealand making good progress in closing the gap. We'll know a lot more about whether they think their foils are going to work in this lighter air or not based on some of their decisions. It's surprising they didn't do a jibe around to the other mark and do what's called a split going up. They, they decide to just follow in Artemis and let the chips kind of fall where they may. Let's see how our boats... They, these guys are easy, also kind of feeling each other out right now. They've all made dramatic changes to their boats since they since they raced last. And let's see how fast we are compared to the other guy. Going into good pressure here. Going into good pressure. So the Kiwis are attacking a little earlier than the Swedes here, just in an attempt to break the spell. Every manoeuvre inevitably involving a loss of boat speed for a moment or two. Both boats splashing down after that tack, so especially for Everest Team New Zealand where we've seen them do those really radical course changes in the tacks and staying up on their foils. They didn't stay up on their foils in that tack. In fact, they were down in the water for quite a while. It's kind of surprising for an Emirates Team New Zealand, but it could be all because of these dagger boards. Slick. 
Okay, that's more like what we've seen in the past where they had the pace going into the attack in just that radical turn. Artemis will still cross, but as we always assumed, not by much. So the Kiwis are beginning to pass. They have made excellent ground. That was a very tidy maneuver, a very clean, crisp tack, and it's put them marginally in front as they head towards the third gate. We just saw the opposite of what we thought we would see. The boat with the light air boards, which is Artemis, definitely didn't tack quite as effectively, but now they're pinned in here's like classic match racing. It's called a pinching maneuver. Artemis is trying to get up underneath and actually give disturbed air to deflect off of their wing into Emirates Team New Zealand. They will be protected by the border here shortly. This is gonna be a critical, a critical tack in this race. Who tacks the boat best coming up to this boundary? Pinching contest. I never thought you'd see that in a. <laughs> and it's not the pinching that you think. I'm well, they're about. almost close enough to, <laughs> to get cozy and pinch each other. They're not too far away here. We're approaching crunch time as the uh, the boundary is hoving into view. Artemis is allowed to tack as soon as they get within three boat lengths. Who can do a foiling tack right here? Better tack quick. Swayze are leaving it late. Too late. Inside the boundary they go. And that will incur a penalty as a result. That is a major setback for Nathan Eitridge and his crew. And the Kiwis are heading off out in front, having made a rather better fist of things. They've Goodness, an unforced error at exactly the wrong time. Listen, yeah. they had all the right in the world to tack whenever they wanted to, when they entered the three boat length zone within the boundary, and they still have their penalty. They have to drop back two full boat lengths. It's been their Achilles heel here in Bermuda. The penalties that they've picked up have really cost them. And they keep saying, let's keep it out of the, the of the umpire's hands. Let's just sail clean. And here they did have just made a silly mistake going into the boundary. So rounds gate three. Downwind once more. And it is the turn of Artemis Racing, the Swedes to do the chasing at this point, but that is a maneuver and a penalty up at the boundary, which has really cost them in terms of the distance that they've now got to cover. Good fly time, that's the amount of time that the two holes are spending out of the water. And it goes without saying, the minimizing of that time any time spent with those holes touching the water and plowing through it is not time that they want to be spending. Emirates to be the lead now. Yeah, yeah Emirates to New Zealand had a much better Parker, drive there. Even in this lighter air. It feels like it's sucking as it's coming out of the water. Whether light air or heavy air, it doesn't matter. These guys aren't trimming the sails for those of you joining the They're America's Cup really for the here, first guys. time during this rendition. Coming. They're the power plant. They are pumping pressure into a hydraulic system which powers everything on the boat. All the sheets, the twist of the wing, the camber in the wing, the trim of the wing, and the dagger boards, the four, and the rudders, the fore and aft rake, the side to side rake, really intricate hydraulic systems that, that work these boats. Without that hydraulic system, nothing works on the boat. So the human power is 100% mandatory all the time, and what a different way of managing that human power. These guys went for leg muscles, the other guys went for arm muscles. And the debate is still raging as to which is the more efficient. We maybe will have some statistics in uh, another little while to be able to, to analyze exactly 
the power output of each of the different boats and the different techniques, the cyclors as they become known, or the traditional grinders. Kiwis certainly think that this cycling method has given them a little edge. It might only be one of several little edges, but certainly here they've been served well by it in Bermuda. How cool is the choreography of the crew work as they come across the boat? We'll have to go back and look at that again. How and where each person positions themselves coming out of attack in lighter air versus breezier conditions. Turning up wind once more, and again, the boat handling is good from Peter Burling, Glenn Ashby. They're all in perfect unison. And Nathan Adridge being put under a degree of pressure here in the Swedish boat. Attack going on on Artemis, a different view than we've ever seen. And in a reasonably classic match racing move, Team New Zealand tacks to stick with them. Okay, watch, the, watch this tack. There's Glenn Ashby, the wing trimmer. He goes across the boat to the other side and actually jumps in the helmsman's cockpit. Burling goes forward of the wing to keep his weight out of the back of the boat. There's Ashby right there. There's Ashby up in the hook. I almost got him. I almost got him with my circle. I'm going to get him one of these days. There is Ashby in his, in his cockpit. And uh, just amazing choreography. I love it when you use that machine, Kenny. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's just quality entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. That. That's what I'm here for you. I, I am. I'm going to get you some coloring in pencils for your yeah. birthday. <laughs> oh, you can see the choreography of the Swedes now. Again, tight to the boundary. But safe enough this time around, although the maneuver doesn't look entirely as they'd like it. You might be able to push through and go back more into more pressure. Okay? Go for the tack when you're ready. Push boy. Any tack. The gap closing, Swedes gaining. So let's go back to Joey uh, out on the water. And, you know, it's kind of interesting, Joey, talking about the light air boards versus the breezier boards. Sure still seems to me that Emirates Team New Zealand has a bit of an edge and staying up on the foils and the tacks. What does it look like from out there? Yeah, I'd agree with that, Ken. Um, the maneuvers just seem a little bit smoother and a bit more consistent. I think as if the patches of the course with the breeze is less, we've seen Artemis gaining and they've got lighter air boards, they pop up earlier. But as the breeze builds, like this at the moment, um, Team New Zealand seems to have a little speed advantage. So smaller boards, less drag. When they're up in the air, they're going to go faster. Two completely different setups yet. They're within about 100 meters. Boy, the Swedes don't mind going close to that left hand boundary. They've gone that far in an attempt to try to make the gate in one? Well, uh, probably not. You can see from this graphic, I don't think they're going to, uh, they have a chance of laying the gate right now. Maybe they, they likely think there's better pressure offshore right now. It's still very kind of cloudy, not quite as squally as it was earlier, but that means that there's very likely big puffs and lulls, wind pressure, the dark water on the, on the, Water, the dark patches in the water is where you want to stick the nose of your boat. Well, the Kiwis seem to be uh, sticking the nose of their boat in the water currently as they um, contemplate this tack up to gate number five. Uh, hitherto, we've seen some pretty surgical maneuvering from the Kiwis, but let's not forget what happened just a handful of days ago when it was suddenly turned upside down and there were sailors hanging from all parts. Their short crew have had a very, very busy time of it, restoring it to its former glories. 
keep it for Hunt. And it wouldn't be at all surprising if there was a little bit of instability yeah. still there, given the damage that was wrought yeah. on that boat. Dan Wind for the final time in the race with the Kiwis out in front. Race one of the Louis Vuitton America's Cup Challenger Playoffs final. The Swedes with it all to do here. The good thing for the Swedes is at least they'll be having a split up here. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Emirates Team New Zealand jibe fairly quickly and try to get over in the same water. They would give up a little bit of their lead, but let's get over and stay on the same side of the race course because it is kind of fluky breeze, kind of shifty. Let's try to eliminate options for Artemis Racing. Yeah, great. Nathan Outridge looking to chase down his old rival, Peter Burling. They have met on countless different courses across the globe. And just one of the delicious little subplots of this particular contest between Sweden and New Zealand. It's going to take something special from Artemis Racing yep. now if they had to close the gap with this sort of distance in the race left. Just yeah. half a leg before the final blast reach to the finish. They're a perfect illustration of the two different grinding techniques. Doesn't get much different, more different than that. Andy. On the Kiwi boat, as a grinder, you really get to know the guy in front of you. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Maybe not the, the parts of them that you'd like, but... <laughs> Here comes the choreography again. Ashby driving the boat, coming out of the tax and jibes. You see him right there in the cockpit in the back of the boat. Right back there, Glenn Ashby. That's the wing trimmer who's driving the boat. Not a bad driver. Hops forward, curling in. Perfect. And all done with minimal chat. I mean, there really is very little conversation on that boat, and we've been watching them for a couple of weeks now. By contrast to the Swedes, they really don't interact a huge amount. It seems to be done mostly on telepathy. And they are through the final gate, and they are heading for the finish line. This has been a terrific display by the Kiwis. Joey, on, Joey uh, if you're a Kiwi fan right now, and you know they got their heavy airboards in, this is very optimistic, isn't it? Yeah, Ken, I think this would be pretty encouraging for these guys. Um, they've got a system on their boards where they change the tips. So even though these are their high-speed boards, they've got a longer set of tips on, which can increase the span a little bit. So they've more motored these boards down the range a little bit. Um, it's obviously pretty effective. The breeze came up a little bit in that race, and the boat was just off. There we go. I just pointed out that's the length. That's that span that we've been talking about, which makes it a high-speed board versus a low-speed board. Beautiful views. Well, they have executed almost to perfection here this afternoon on the great sounds, the New Zealanders. Such a contrast from the chaos and the turmoil of Tuesday when their boat did not look at its best. But this is a team in perfect unison at the moment. Very calm, very relaxed, and safely in the knowledge that they've got this first race tucked away in the bag. Good boat speed all the way down the runway. And the Kiwis take a 1-0 lead in the playoffs final, overcoming something of a slow start, capitalising crucially on that Swedish penalty just before gate three. New Zealand up in the final. Very accomplished. All done with the minimum of fuss. Not a bad place to start. You, zero celebration. They know they're in for the long haul here. 
Time to uh, get back to the shore crew that are standing by. They will cover the boat with engineers and structural people and do a really good look-see through every single system on the boat and be ready for uh, race number two. Both boats are kind of settling for their position. Let's see who pulls the trigger the best. And as we've seen on countless occasions out here on the Great Sand, the timing of this is pivotal. Have the Swedes timed it well. Looks like they have to the left-hand side. And Artemis Racing are off and running, but the Kiwis right alongside them. Both the boats foiling early and reaching up and beyond the 30 knot mark. This is about angle into the mark right now. Artemis is actually holding them well up above the mark. The mark is way down there. So they're holding them well above the mark. This is a tactical situation where Artemis will hold them up and they'll peel off first and try to either get them to foul, which there's a little luff. He's actually heading up. Artemis racing fully in control right now. A little luff, get them slow and bear away. Very good match racing tactics by Nathan Average. So the Swedes off to marginally the better start. Thanks to their helmsman. Aggressive poise in these early exchanges as they round mark one and head down win for the first time. Two for two starts for Nathan Outeridge. Let's, uh, let's turn it into something if you're a Swedish fan. Little luck here, here we go. Come on up, get out of the way. Artemis is the lured boat with an overlap, which means they are the right of way boat. Both boats did exactly what they had to do. Artemis could give them a little luff, but the Kiwis stayed out of the way. No harm, no foul, race on. Both boats driving almost simultaneously and as we can see, just the slenderest of margins between the two. It's been really instructive over the last couple of weeks to see how calm the New Zealanders are when they are faced with a boat in front of them. They just know their boat speed is good here. The, uh, the heart rates of the grinders. Anders Gustafsson is all maxed out. Three tags. I don't even know what to say. So their maximum heart rate is 220 minus your age. And I, I think he's about 12 years old. So that's <laughs> if that's you or me, the next thing you know is there's an ambulance on the way. I can tell you that. The lights are flashing. Kiwis following in, doing exactly what they did in that first race. Let's use our maneuverability and our speed to really tight, really good rounders. Both boats very clearly foiling through their tacks more effectively. But it's this flat out boat speed that sometimes you see the heavier air boards, or not sometimes, all the time you see the heavier air boards possibly being a little quicker. Look at these hand, look at these hand holds right here on the wheel. That's the helmsman. When he get, puts his hand on there, the helmsman's controlling the four and a half rate of the dagger boards, the lift or the drop in the boat. You see in his, his right hand, he was actually doing it there. So there's the, uh, the two boats side by side, so we might get a chance to have a a slightly tighter look at the, the foils themselves and the discrepancies between the two. Very straight blades, those horizontal blades, quite straight on Artemis. Let's see how, how quick and good they're, they're tacking smack on top of Emirates Team New Zealand. A good foiling tack. They're going to use their wing wash here to try to throw some disturbed air on top of Emirates Team New Zealand. Really, again, for a lot of... Uh, Newcomers to multi-health. Look at how straight that foil is. Look at that. That's just dead.
dead straight where you see the tip out here. The tip is actually completely straight. Whereas we'll possibly take a look at the Kiwis in a minute. The Kiwis definitely don't have that straight for it. Look at the bend to the foil, the kink in the foils on the Kiwis boat compared to that super straight foil that we saw. It's amazing that very smart people to try to accomplish the same thing come up with completely different ways to design them. And that's as close as we've been to the foil so far. Cameras everywhere, these guys can barely breathe without us picking up something. <laughs> well, this is as close as we've seen to good racing so far here as well. 50 meters between the two. That's a less than a one mistake. You better not come off your foils and attack or the other boat's gonna pass you or you're gonna extend significantly. Just look at the grimacing faces. They are digging in here, the grinders. Just a relentless drive to the finish line from really from the outset. There is no letter. And with three races today, depending on how much rotation they use in their squad, there's going to be some tired bodies this evening. These are brutal races on the afterguard, kind of a modern day afterguard, of course. The helmsman and the tactician, these tight races, there is zero room for effort. For, for uh, mistakes, zero. So what the Kiwis hope will be the yep. final tack into the gate. Yep. Artemis slamming right on top of them, not literally, but figuratively, of course. Again, using that wing wash, that disturbed air that will come off the back of the wing to try to slow down the Kiwis. Look at that, great right right smack, upwind. There's the yep. wash right on top. That was a perfectly timed tack by Artemis Racing. High up on their foils as they round the gate, these Swedes, with a narrow advantage, but a significant one at the moment, and it is Peter Burling who is trying to work out ways and means of Weaving them in from here. Okay. <laughs> this is where I'm bored with Burling here. You heard him say, hey, we're still in this place. It's like not a lot of pressure. <laughs> Burling actually does this a little bit different. He has just a couple buttons on his wheel. He has no hand grips whatsoever. Blair Took actually has, there's the buttons. I, we don't even know what those mean. They could just be for show for all we know. Oh, he actually touched it. He pushed it with his thumb. First time, first time for everything. He actually uses them. They're not for show. <laughs> well, we've been pondering, haven't we, over the last fortnight as we see 100% fly time from both of these boats up on their foils for the entirety of the race. We've been pondering as to whether some of the buttons might be all part of a grand... <laughs> secretive plots, the subterfuge to try to... Exactly. Well, no buttons here. He has his hand on both sides on the grips. He, especially his right hand right there. His right hand is on a grip that he is using to control the fore and aft rake of the dagger board. So the helmsman is in control of the dagger board for, the most, for most of the time on this boat. You see his hand twisting, his right hand twisting right there. On Emirates Team New Zealand, they do it very differently. Blair Took, uh, another crew member, has control of those foils. So it's really very different setup on both boats. Not just the cyclists versus the grinders, but how they adjust that very important rate of the dagger boards. More like a jet pilot. You know, these guys are fighter pilots, as the great Australian John Bertrand said the other day. These guys are way more like fighter pilots than they are sailors at this stage. Yeah, looks okay. Okay, setting up. My wing. Two, one, four, jump. Hard down. And it goes without saying, Kenny, that 
crossing that trampoline at speed at 30 knots is, is not as easy as they make it look. No, these are athletes, and I'll tell you what, the Kiwis are not going away. They are right there. One mistake, one mistake. That's all it takes. That is, this is a less than a one, we keep calling them one mistake leads. This is less than a uh, one mistake lead. Both boats have been out of the water with their lured hulls the last time we looked, 100% of the time. 20 seconds, all stand by. Look at that, the yep, gap close from 150 down to 65 odd meters and by here. still 100% of the time <laughs> up on the foils. You always maintain, Kenny, that if, if you're within 150, you've got a sniff. Uh, we, we, I think a, a bad tack is about a 150 meter tack. That, that, that is the conclusion that I've come to just kind of looking at uh, the two weeks worth of racing so far. Easy to say from up here in the booth. Those are two more perfect tacks. Another part of the America's Cup always is as you advance in the rounds, you see fewer and fewer mistakes. To see two boats right now, both Flying 100% of the time is just stunning. That's just again. remarkable. Coming up to hit him hard on port, don't we? Hit the right hook pressure. I think we take the one going now, so it makes it easier. Yeah, there's another one coming here at that angle too. Yeah. On board with Artis, Artemis Racing, a very vocal Ian Percy. As the tactician, he's saying we want to hit him hard on the next tack. Hit him hard means uh, not physically. It means uh, spiritually hit him hard. They want to tack right in front of them. Put them into a bit of a quagmire. And give them dirty air or that wing wash all the way in. This is going to be a tough. Don't, don't get slow on this tack if you're Artemis Racing. Here's the cross from the Kiwis, although the, the Swedes now have tapped as well and battle is joined again. Let's check in with uh, with Joey Newton, part of Oracle Team USA. He's out on the water for us this afternoon. Um, Joey, anything you've, you've picked up from this race that we haven't spotted that you think might be a crucial factor? It looks like the Swedes are, well, they may just have enough to, to cling on to the lead they gained from the start here. Yeah, the, the Swedes are sailing fantastically, Ali. And just one thing I've been noticing, when the boats are on starboard tack, Artemis doesn't really seem to have that much of a speed deficit. But when they're on port tack like now, they do. So they might have a slightly lower drag set up on their foil on the left-hand side to help them on the reach, and that's paying dividends when they're upwind on starboard. Now we're getting into a little bit of... Yeah, that, that's good information. Let's see. <laughs> Whether it's true or not, Joey, we're running with that, okay? <laughs> okay. Well, we've been struggling to squeeze the secrets of this mystifying sport out of Joey for a fortnight now. Finally, it's bearing fruit. But Joey, I, I mean, Oracle Racing, as your, your teammates, I'll tell you what, if I were watching this race right now and I was on Oracle, I'd be thinking this is about as high quality a racing as you could possibly get. They've both been out 100% of the time, zero mistakes. Essentially, the lead that we saw off the line is exactly the lead now. This is, this is quality. Yeah, well, I can tell you, all the guys are in there. Um, they've got a special little room that they sit in and watch these races. So they're all in there at the moment, probably getting massages and eating ice cream and watching a pretty good battle going on. While well, you're struggling out of the water, right? Yeah, that's why I'm toughing it out out here. <laughs> Putting it in for us. Thanks, Joey. So approaching gate five. One more downwind leg before the reach to the finish. And it is tight, really tight at the moment. Kiwi's far from out of it. I think there'll be a split at this top gate, so Ian Percy made the decision to not cover there. He's willing to just do one more tack and into the gate. The Kiwis are going to do, have, will do two tacks to get into the gate, so he's minimizing one maneuver, but the risk is very likely a split as this next run, the final run down to the finish, happens. boat speeds as they round the gate. Nathan Outridge and his crew looking to cling on to this lead that they've built and held. Picking up some 
really useful speed away from the gate, but as ever, no panic on board Emirates Team New Zealand. Just resolve and organisation and hard work. You saw Burling looking down. He was looking at that gauge to tell him where the boundary was. Again, no chance at a bad manoeuvre here for either boat. Gonna move this as fast as we can. Three. May just be reaping the benefits of where the, uh, the boat speed's now very similar as they head very close to the boundary edge. The New Zealanders must be very tight to that. Very tight indeed, but safe regardless. Flawless boat handling for both boats through the entire race. Like stunning boat handling. Yeah, in the pressure here. Yep. That knock that Artemis, darn close to split in half right there. It's actually mark one. That is irrelevant on the course for the rest of the race. They just round it. Ian Percy has moved all the way to the back of the boat. That is tactician. Ian, Ian Percy right there. He's in the back of the boat. He's got his weight back aft, so he's taken himself out of the power plant, and they're actually moved their weight aft on this leg to try to rock the boat and use the foils a little more effectively. Looks like fun, doesn't it? I know you miss it, Kenny. You'd love to be doing that right now. Maybe around Ocean Drive in Newport, but I don't see myself out there in the water doing that. Still a one mistake lead. The Artemis should be quite close to laying this gate, getting into the gate on one more jive, but I'll tell you what, still, Emirates Team New Zealand not going away. A little more pressure where Team New Zealand is right now. One more jive to go, though, for New Zealand. Artemis should be laying straight in. So the lead around about 110 meters or so, but the Swedes have managed very tidily to go through the gate and they are off and flying down this finishing straight. New Zealand in hot pursuit, but it looks like their challenge might be done in this, the second race of the Louis Vuitton America's Cup Challenger Playoff Final. You can make a case that Team New Zealand has sailed one of their best races in the entire event. I believe they're still at 100% fly time, but when a boat sails as well as Artemis, they had the jump at the start. Oh, New Zealand. Oh, I was so excited for two 100%. Artemis has sailed as close to a perfect race as we've seen. And if the boat ahead sails as quickly as they have and as mistake-free as they have, you're not going to get by. I'm sorry, you're not ever going to get by. And based on, look at the numbers up on their wing. There's a bunch of numbers ticking away. I don't think we've seen that yet. Up on their wing, up in there, that area, we just went away from it. Up in the center of the panel up there, a whole bunch of numbers. Well, the numbers are stacking up in their favor this time around. Artemis Racing of Sweden, led by Nathan Outridge, bouncing back with victory in race two. Their boat handling flawless, up on the foils for the duration of the race, and hammering over the finish line in front. One point apiece in the final as we see the Kiwi splash down. Game on. New Zealand will continue to push. If they can keep pushing up the line, okay, watch this. they could make this difficult. But I think they just might be happy to kind of just do this time and distance thing and head for the mark. They will have an overlap though. Such a delicate balance. Please but they have trod that fine line pretty carefully, both of these two. Remember the angle difference for Artemis. Sorry, Ali, that, Artem that angle difference from the top of the line over the shorter distance from Emirates to Team New Zealand's part of the line. So for the third time, 
this afternoon, the Swedes off to the better start, and they're the boat out in front as they reach so right for the first mark. Favorite. The better angle one, time and distance wise. I thought I thought the Kiwis got up on their foils pretty effectively there, but Artemis showed a burst of speed off the line. I'll tell you what, we're up into the 40 knot category here, which is as fast as we've seen the, uh, the Kiwis even well beyond that. 42 knots of boat speed. Does that indicate that the wind has picked up a good deal? Well, let's go back to Joey Newton on the water. Joey, a little more breeze? Yeah, it's picked up a little bit, Ken. I just think it's due to there's a little bit of weather um, up to the windward side of the course where it's raining, and that's pushing um, quite a bit more breeze through. So we could see as much as 14 or 15 knots for this race. We can't give them space to uh, Ali, I think it's safe to say there's not much in it. One boat essentially in the lap of the other boat here right now. Yeah. So similar dynamic, yeah. isn't it, to same, same. what we saw same in race. race number two. Racing in tight confines. At this time in the regatta, you better be perfect, and both of these boats are proving that perfection is possible. They were happy to go straight, because they will have the inside. What do you think, Nate? They are happy to go straight. Let's get to the zone. At the moment, I'd say pressure's still on the left. Up the course, Yeah. He's keeling in, but he could change. Let's just go left, Mike. Yeah, early time. It's so, only 40 metres now, it's a loss to him, okay? It's really instructive to, to see the collaborative effort of the Swedes and the chat between them. The communication is, is very strong. It's one of their strongest elements as we see in excellent mark rounding from them. The Kiwis splitting the course, not nearly so talkative, but they are off hunting air in a different direction. The, the Kiwis just pulled off that super tough last yep. second jibe maneuver going into that gate in order to gain the split. They didn't follow around this time. I think it's something probably that they talked about in between races twice now. They've simply followed around Artemis in that bottom gate. This time around, they chose to do the split. And by doing that, Ken, by following them around, they're essentially waiting for the error, right? It's waiting for the error, and they're they're sitting in their coach boat, and I guarantee their coach is saying, these guys ain't making many errors right now, so let's start mixing it up a little bit and go off and try to do our thing and find a good wind shift. Proactivity. Yeah, what you're doing now is good. From the New Zealanders. Still, the chat comes from Ian Percy. Sorry, Ali. The, even though the first cross may come back to Artemis. Artemis has to make a choice here. Do you tack on top of the other boat or do you continue allowing the split? We haven't got a hit, we keep going. Right, so that you heard Ian Percy say, we don't have a hit, keep going, which means they still have a split. You know, that, that split didn't just happen at the bottom mark, didn't just happen on here in the first cross. They're gonna get another shot at, at, a, at a wind shift here. So that's what you're setting yourself up for. Doesn't have to happen, the miracle doesn't have to happen immediately, but hopefully the wind gods help you out if you're Emirates Team New Zealand as you go up the race course. Seven. The Swedes with a narrow advantage, which they have held from the word go. It will lift back up in a minute. This is going to be a reasonably tight cross. Slight right hand wind shift, as indicated in the upper corner. That course access is 230. The breeze is currently at 235. Slight game for Emirates Team New Zealand coming back on that cross. Just in case we have to come in on the line to the top of the zone. 
It's amazing, Ali, the difference in communication. You brought it up earlier on yeah, the two boats. Good oh, they're sitting on a lousy further. race by so far. Terrible. Race. <laughs> Goodness. Get the cat and nine tails out. Ian Percy and Nathan Outeridge are far more kind of old school skipper, tactician, helmsman, tactician communication, where the tactician's almost giving you a play by play. It's very much the way I was taught to do it. New school is way different. To be frank, going on this boat and kind of laying out and listening on Emirates Team New Zealand is just hearing to some clinking and clunking. They don't talk. So, so Burling is all over this by himself. Now we're coming up to a key moment here. If Burling can get into that zone and have a piece of Artemis, he would be allowed to uh, round that left. But Artemis gets across and stays barely in the lead. Just in the nick of time for the Swedish boat. Round they go, but there is less and less of a gap between these two. And look at the boat speed of the Kiwis. Just piling away from the gate. The starboard tack boat, Artemis Racing, has right away, but... As you approach those marks, there's a whole bunch of other little rules that come into effect. Fact is, no harm, no foul. Artemis squeaks around the mark. Okay. Boy, looking at the race course right now, there's a lot of dark water where Artemis Racing was, but Kiwis were going off the fast. I was just about to say, it looked like Artemis Racing was potentially in a little more wind pressure. I have to see what this cross looks like as these boats come back together. I think they've had a little game. You see that dark water up at the top of the screen. That whole, that whole area where Artemis is, just a little bit darker water. So maybe a slight stretch out to 100 meters in this day and age. A massive lead. <laughs> Look at this. How tough is it to, to spot those wind shifts when you're actually flying along at 30, 40 knots, though, no Ken? Can you instantly see? that there would be a change to conditions if you headed off in, in a particular direction, if you got up there quick enough. Well, nothing's instant and nothing is assured. You're using your intuition as the tactician or, in the Kiwi's case, Burling as the helmsman. You're just looking at the water and trying to see the dark patches at that stage. You have instruments on board telling you what the shift is. Is it to the right or to the left? But the key move in these boats, which can gain you so much speed, is stay in the dark water. That means in the best velocity on the race course. And by their nature, wind shifts are presumably a little shifty, as we see not Bad the jive. cleanest of jives from the Swedes. That might cost them a little bit as they head towards gate four. They've got a tight mark rounding as well. Round they go. And... Um, Kiwis are recovering well from their maneuver, too. Artemis didn't have a perfect jive, <laughs> and all of a sudden, we are almost dead even on the race course. Next time back across, the Kiwis will have starboard tack. Here comes their jive. They're a little in unstable going into the jive. Sorry, this is coming out of the jive. Not only do they get too low, then they get a little too high. Don't make a mistake out there, fellas. A little late afternoon shower up on the starboard hull. Okay, key moment. Starboard tack, Emirates Team New Zealand, port tack, Artemis. As we all know, starboard tack boat has right away. And Artemis get across clean. TWD meaning true wind direction. True wind direction. Pretty similar, nice job. Ali, as a rugby guy, you're starting to get it. Does Artemis have is. to duck? Is Artemis going to get across clean? Close. <laughs> Not a huge amount in it. Not for the faint of heart. I agree, but two lengths. Reasonably lifted here. in between Nathan Adridge and Ian Percy. The only time for pressure. Watch Percy's eyes 
Percy's eyes are looking up at that wing all the time. He's not only looking at pressure on the water, but he's looking at that instrumentation, that box of instruments we saw that are perched up on the wing in order to read the true wind direction, as you just called a minute ago, the actual wind direction. They have an instrument on board that boat that will help guide what that wind direction is. Here comes another tight cross. Just get the feeling this might be tighter than the last one. So the cross coming your way. The Swedes with their noses in front. The Kiwis in hot pursuit at the moment. Trying to make up ground. One apiece to the Challenger playoffs final, remember. Just sights we've never seen before. Amazing new camera angles. We have eight cameras on each boat right now. There's drones flying. There's helicopters everywhere. There's boats, the cameramen on boats. There's no escape. There's no escape. At the moment, the marks are pretty even, all right? Here's where a little wind shift, a tiny wind shift, is going to make the difference in this race. Well, they're at opposite ends of the course at the moment, but they are neck and neck in reality. Look at this. One little left-hand shift, possibly, although... The true wind direction seems to be, oh, they were attacking. So the true wind direction goes all over the map when it's, uh, that we're actually getting the instrumentation off of these boats. Man overboard on Sweden oh, during God, the you want to stay here? Oh my goodness. Yep. Who yep. is it? It looks like it I'm might. going to look at him. Is that Nathan Adrich? Okay, right hand mark. Go right. Go right, go right, go right. Wait a minute. We got enough. First of all, he's okay. Well, this is the first time we've seen this in Bermuda, and the Swedes in all kinds of bother with a man down. The Kiwis have straked out in front, and they will round this gate and head downwind for the final time in just, the race. Just when you going. think you've and seen you it come. all, you've got to be kidding me. This might be Outer Ridge that's in the water. I think it is. Yeah, it's Outer Ridge. He's gone. The helmsman's gone. And the rest of them are getting a dousing. Can they possibly claw it back from here without their helmsman? No. Ken, is that a possibility or is it game over from here? Any time here, boys. I think that's Ian Jensen driving the boat now. He, he's the wing trimmer right, normally. You just clean it off. No. You come, any time. No, 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 that is not, that, Ian Jensen is still on, on the right-hand side. It's Paco. It's Welcome over. to the big time, boys, son. Yeah, yeah play it safe. Go well, on, he won't in. have done this terribly often. And yeah. that might account for yeah. the fact that it yeah. hasn't been the smoothest of passages the since the yeah. gate rounding. I think they're just backing off right now, knowing that this is over. This is when it happened. This is when Nathan Adridge went disappearing into the drink. Top right of your screen is gone. Just the smallest of slides, and out he went. Sliding into second base, and he's safe. Holy mackerel. Remember... Don't retire yet, just in case, but we just go low and slow. Let's go for a drive here. So they're not retiring from the race, but they've decided one man down without their skipper, without their helmsman. Let's just uh, preserve the assets and keep the energy. It should go out of bounds. It's not going to be a problem. So the, uh, the boundary penalty has been applied, not that it will matter in the final analysis. There's been no decision to retire at this point, but just uh, the we race were, is over. Yeah, just, Ali, just as we were talking about the perfection that we like, the likes we've never seen. Goodness, well, we've, we've seen it all now, haven't we? I mean, are there further crazy developments to come in this America's Cup, Ken? We've seen the... New Zealanders pitch polling and sailors hanging out of their cockpits. And Nathan Atterish 
flying off the bat when the boat is moving at 27 knots. Well, there's a bit of a G-force, you know, that as, as the boat gets thrown, it doesn't take too much to get a little out of kilter when you're dashing across a moving object, a, a, a sailing flying missile like these things are. So I can't say that it's unheard of. The, the good news is when he fell off the boat, that rudder blade, A, it's sharp, B, it's strong, C, that could do some serious damage to a human being. Absolutely. So presumably it was, it was a, a saving grace that he fell sideways off the boat exactly. as opposed to directly out the back. Exactly correct. Frank Kamas got really hurt. Uh, the, the skipper of Group Bomber Team France really hurt. His leg really hurt during trialing. Uh, that was probably a year and a half or so ago when his leg did hit the rudder and he fell off. So falling off is not unheard of. Fortunately, missing the rudder is the key part of Nathan Outeridge's day. Listen, they're going to be ticked off at the end of this race, but within a couple days, he'll be getting plenty of grief from his buddies. Dramatic developments out on the great sound as the Kiwis hammer their way over the finishing line. They've won race three. They moved 2-1 ahead in the Challenger playoff final. Nathan Outridge overboard for Sweden and Peter Berling capitalising on his misfortune. So difficult getting this timing right, isn't it? We've seen it time after time. The complications in having to slow up a little bit and because they're heading at 35 knots or so, that is a real issue here. And away they go. There's nothing in it at the start. They were just slightly early on Artemis Racing. They're coming from that higher speed favorite end. But remember, Artemis has probably started one boat length further away from Mark 1 than Emirates Team New Zealand. Can they use that speed and angle into the mark and get over the top? And it looks like they do it again. Certainly looks as if the speed is too much for the Kiwis in that opening reach. Into the first mark and turning downwind. 45 knots of boat speed. We know the Swedes are quick. That isn't the issue here. The issue is boat handling and whether they can maintain the consistency of their maneuvers across this course now with a familiar pattern for the fourth race running between these two. Artemis Racing have got the best start and the Kiwis have to play catch up. Kiwis jive early, most likely to set themselves up for a split at the bottom gate. What about the foils in use today? Yeah, look, because it's uh, it, the conditions are tricky because the wind speeds vary a huge amount. These look certainly, and we're trying to get confirmation right now, but certainly much shorter foils on Artemis than there is on Emirates Team New Zealand. So you got to you got to imagine that inherently the breeze is just it's just simply windier than it was supposed to be right now. You got to believe that has to be a fav uh, favoring Artemis at this stage, just from a pure boat speed standpoint. 44 knots coming into this bottom mark. Sweets absolutely hammering it and keeping it very tight to the gate. Trying very hard not to lose too much boat speed in the New Zealanders are there or thereabouts, but not the cleanest of mark roundings. So both attacking relatively simultaneously. Look at this though from New Zealand, not the stability that we're used to from them, but a good good enough recovery. Yeah, good recovery, that's exactly right. Minimizing what could be a disastrous mistake and uh, keeping it close. This is the Emirates Team New Zealand that we have become incredibly familiar with. Just content with keeping it close and keep the pressure on the boat ahead. And don't, and don't say you know, <laughs> is, is tremendously helpful in this situation because they've been in this scenario countless times in the last two weeks and it just does not phase them. It doesn't phase them. I mean, look, they literally don't say anything on board. It's just 
it's really it's an incredible form of non-communication. <laughs> I guess I need to get the technical for that company. So the site feels hard at work. It's the only team, of course, who have their grinding system operating like that, generating the power with their legs rather than their arms. The hybrid system adopted by the Americans. Maybe, maybe we'll see a showdown between those two different systems in the match itself. The Swedes will have other ideas, though. All action across the platform. Nathan Artrich just being a little bit more careful, perhaps, than yesterday. He was talking, wasn't he, about the need for a bit of grip tape along the back there to help him out, and he was going to take things a little steadier after his, his um, impromptu so swing yesterday. God, that looks like fun. Simon van Velt holding the uh, man at the front, yep. the first cyclo that you saw. There's Peter Burling just... Calm and in control as ever, the Iceman. Slight right-hand shift as our indicator is showing up there, but both boats aiming for that right-hand side. The Kiwis probably took a slight advantage on that shift. It's wet out there, right? I mean, these guys are all a little bit moist on board, not just from getting fire hosed by the boat, but it's pouring rain. this stage, I don't know if they feel it anymore. I think these guys are very used to being a bit moist on board. So let's bring in Paul Kayard, who's out on the water for us today. Paul, what have you spotted in the uh, the opening exchanges between these two today? Well, I agree with Ken. Uh, Artemis definitely changed boards from yesterday. They're on their high-speed boards, and I think that's what gave them the pace off the start. Um, and upwind here, they look fast. They're also match racing well. You saw the last time on starboard, they tacked right on the Kiwi's face um, and controlling. They, they look like they want to protect the left. So I'd say Artemis faster today with the high-speed boards. That's the big change so far. You know, Paul, a lot of times Artemis has been known to go asymmetric and actually use a higher speed board for that first reach. For, you know, try to get that lead, try to be really quick on that first reach and then use a lower speed board. I'm not so sure. We, it's not often we see both of them at the same time. I wonder if we can try to measure them at some stage or even we'll try to get a hold of their measurement certificate maybe. They have, to, they have to put a measurement certificate in every single day. Yeah, that's uh, that's hey, affirmative. Um, um, I just can. noticed, like you did, that the the board looks significantly uh, shorter. I think it's about 2.4 meters today. Kiwis are on about 2.7 meters, uh, but they have a thinner tip. They, uh, Kiwis have the same boards as yesterday, so it's interesting that Artemis went with the high-speed boards because, as you know, the forecast was for pretty light air today. Uh, right now, there's more wind than the forecast, so it's working out for Artemis. Yes, the, uh, the wind speeds we were expecting around 8 to 10 knots, possibly less than that at various moments, but we've been up to 17. And around about yeah, 14 just now. I think Artemis is sailing really well. Uh, they pushed the uh, Kiwis into the right corner on the beat, which was a loss for the Kiwis, and then they set up the split here at the weather mark, pushing the Kiwis back into that same light air corner. Um. Pressure is off a bit. When these guys keep those big mistakes away, they've always looked spectacular. And the Kiwis are doing their Kiwi thing. They just keep it close and solid as a rock and just wait to pounce. But I think Paul's exactly right. They, Ian Percy. Definitely chose the correct side here. A little more pressure, a little less landmass directly upwind of the side of the race course that Artemis Racing went to. Yeah, I agree. 
we have to, the pressure is good in front. We have to watch going a bit early for the left hand part, basically. Marginal one and in for the right. That's slowly going to get off here, but I think it's okay. It'd be nice to do it in one. It's almost a permanent conversation on board the Swedish boat, whereas the Kiwis are virtually silent. Well, a lot of good tacticians are known really to, well, it's kind of what we do. They, they become almost a play-by-play. -play. They're analyzing what's going on on the race course. And Burling just does both of those jobs pretty much himself. They're talking about big breeze coming down their side right now. 35 knots. What's the boundary? Right hand mark favoured at the moment, but let's see. We'll get there. Good pressure in the lower nose. Body's down. Happy to put it in the bank though, please. Copy. Here it is. You happy with him getting the split? It's 30 meters. I think we have the lead to go right hand mark, early tack. Yeah, copy that. By the way, up forward, we just had a close up of yesterday's temporary helmsman, Luke Parkinson, who got kind of thrust into action. Good yeah, pressure out here. I think he's a little more comfortable back in his, in today's position so far. Anyway. I mean, comfort's yep. relative, isn't it, when your heart rate's at 90% of its max? Two, yes. one, here we go. Nice, nice little leg by Artemis here. I think Paul said it exactly right. They, Ian Percy did a really nice job of choosing the side of the gate at the top of the course, up at the windward mark, that he thought was going to be better pressure, and uh, they extended. Swedes cruising away and looking pretty comfortable at this point, but when Peter Burling is on your tail, I'm not sure anything is a given. A relentless physical ahead, flogging. That's what some of these Watch sailors have described that Let's go past in the grinding activity as just no prisoners attack. taken. BMG or slightly higher than I think now. You hear a person saying BMG or slightly higher. That BMG is the sailor's term for the combination between closeness to the wind and flat boat speed, and flat out boat speed. And the further you head away from the wind, typically the faster you go, the closer you go to the wind, the, the shorter the distance. So it's that combination of the two that's so critical. And they look like long boards. A healthy lead at the moment for the Swedish boat under Nathan Outridge. Peter Burling is leaving it pretty late if he's to squeeze back into the picture here. Can I explain some of those numbers? Yeah, sure. Well, this is the this is a classic kind of a display that a sailor uh, on any sailboat with instrumentation would see. The actual boat speeds, the TWD is true wind direction, TWA, true wind angle. And then that BMG number that we were talking about before, the BMG is the combination of boat speed and true wind angle. And it's really, it's as good a judge as anything. It's throwing a bunch of, certainly throwing a bunch of numbers at, a, at, the, uh, at the newcomer to sailing, but for those who have been doing it for quite a while, uh, believe it or not, Allie, they... It makes sense. It, <laughs> for you rugby guys, it may not be perfect, but... We can, we can only count in threes, so... <laughs> up to right now all that incredible physical activity and still having the wherewithal to make the right decisions tactically 
spotting wind shifts, working out what the best possible options are. The Kiwis still do not go away. They've climbed it back. It was almost a 200 plus meter. The Swedish boat. And now, what is that going to cost them in terms of the meters? Something's the wrong on board is Artemis there. right now. Something there, out of control on board Artemis. I think they fouled Emirates Team New Zealand. They they are the windward boat. Emirates Team New Zealand has pushed their button. Let's wait and see. It's in the hands of the umpires again. So they're looking for no penalty. penalty. Has not been awarded. So a lifeline to the Swedes, but a dramatic development with only what a leg and a half before the reach to the finish. And now battle really is joined. Look how tight they are to each other. Now again the Kiwis protesting against the Swedish boat once more. Well, it was a little rough there. It was unclear whether there was an overlap or not. But why did Artemis lose control? Completely lost control there for a second. Here's the tack. After the tack, they get quite high in their flight right here, and they just skid sideways. Plaster it in, and then this is where it got really weird. All of a sudden, the boat bore off right in really high flight. Team New Zealand bore off because they thought they were going to have Artemis in their lap. So I have to admit, I'm surprised that wasn't a protest. That was that was a scary situation there. Pivotal moments. And rounding gate number five. They are heading downwind for the last time in the race. It's anybody's at the moment. The Swedes have just about managed to keep their noses in front, but it is incredibly tight, very marginal still. That wasn't too far removed, Ken, from what we saw the Kiwis doing last Tuesday when their boat ended up upside down. Oh, the, you mean the, 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 the pole, height that it got, the lift the, that the it pitch got pole. before plunging? Yeah, that's a very fair point. And it's also not too far removed from that Japan Land, Land Rover BAR pre-start where BAR overflew and just skidded sideways into uh, Japan. And this seems like many moons ago, but if you overfly these boats, if they get too high, they go sideways. And that thing not only went sideways, but goodness it looked like he lost steering control of it for uh, for a couple seconds and really set up what could have been a dangerous situation so the uh, discrepancy there is Simon van Veldhoven right at the front here with his head face down only 51% of his max heart rate I wonder, I wonder if the device is working properly because he sure looks like he's giving it everything he's got and Blair Tuke is up in the 90s. It's like having a carbon fiber pillow. He doesn't look to be enjoying himself a huge amount, it must be said, just at this moment in time. Keep turning into it. Quick turning. Head, head up, Goose. I'm a bit quick. Bye, Will. So the jibe from the Swedes. Yep. Goodness, they have to consider themselves really very fortunate still to have this lead at this point. Now let's work it down slowly. So, I mean, normally, probably want to lay the right a mistake of that up. magnitude, Ken, it, it, it right costs right. you the lead, and it hasn't on this occasion. Uh, we're going to have to go back and look at that again. I mean, no, Artemis, when they kind of went scalding off away from, you know, going, they, they weren't going upwind anymore. They went just yeah. careening off. Seemingly losing control up, for a sec. I'll tell you what, if I were Peter Burling, I would have done exactly the same thing. I would have been bearing off to get out of the way because I think I would have thought they were going to be sitting in my lap here in a, in a split second. So, just a fascinating turn of events of which they've obviously recovered. Okay, my wheel. Above this mark, obviously. Yep. This is actually a right hand turn coming into this final blast in the finish. Artemis Racing is actually on a fast lay line into, into this. Mark, they will have a faster angle than Emirates Team New Zealand, even though Emirates Team New Zealand has made the gate. Artemis is gonna come ripping over this finish line. Winning 
Just a handful of more meters to go. Recovering so well from what looked like, well, if not the end, then close to the end. But the Swedes across in race one of the day, race four of the final at 40 knots and claiming the victory over Peter Burling's New Zealand team. They are level at two points apiece in the Challenger playoffs final. 10 seconds to go. I think this is a clean start with Artemis clearly in the advantage right now. Can Emirates Team New Zealand make that better angle stick? Start. Away they go. And again, it's the Swedes who are just about in front. But rather like before, there's not a huge amount in it in the Kiwis this time on the on the outside lane, so to speak. We've seen, yeah, we've seen this move nicely. before. We've seen the move before where Artemis will keep them up above the mark. See the mark in the left-hand corner, way down there. The, they're, they're sailing above the mark. They will try to extend away. There they go. They peel away first and try to make a little extension. Ripping over the water at 42 knots and beyond. The Swedes keeping it tight to the mark. Downwind they go. For the fifth race running, it is Nathan Attridge who has made it to the first mark in front. Now, across the, the couple of weeks that we've had here in Bermuda, that has made a big, big difference if you take all the teams as a whole. But the Swedes have not been converting their leads in quite the same way that they would have liked. Well, they're now 50-50 in this series alone. I believe it's 66% of the time the Swedes have actually made that first mark lead stick onto the finish. Interesting the way the course is set up, the boundary isn't even effect on this first run. Let's go down to maybe Paul Kayard in the water and Paul, that first reach, Artemis made the Kind of the unfavored speed side work that time. Clearly, those high speed boards are better on that first reach, aren't they? Exactly, Ken. I mean, so far, again, it's a tail of the boards. Wind and right face. I just wonder how much, even at this early point, the Kiwis would be concerned about it. Whenever he's asked about it, Peter Bulling doesn't seem overly perturbed by the starts because he has such faith and confidence in the boat speed subsequently and their reliability in their maneuvering as we're seeing here which is almost second to none but if they were to go through you have been saying repeatedly Ken haven't you that Jimmy Spithill will really take advantage in those starts well I've noticed he's out here ever since Japan was eliminated, Jimmy Spithill's been out doing starting practice with Dean Barker every single day. So, you know that's, that's on the top of their mind. There's no doubt about that. streets, Paul Kayard, myself, every other sailor in the world, where you lose a little bit of confidence in your starting ability. There's no doubt about that. And it's one thing to, to lose confidence. Look at this one a slight slip up on the tack. You lose confidence in your starting ability, but you constantly gain confidence in being able to dominate your opponent if they make one little mistake. And again, Artemis Racing tacked a little early off the line of Emirates Team New Zealand, and they pounce right away. That's incredible. It would be Chris Brittle right now. 99% of his max heart rate, and every percentage is counting as they try to push the oil around the system, the hydraulic power that manipulates everything on board these platforms. Very tight to each other. This is where we 
we might see a degree of tactical savvy coming into play. Ken, what are the options here for the two helmsmen? Well, the option earlier was Artemis to actually tack on top of Team New Zealand or extend or go to the other gate if you think you're a faster boat. But they actually tacked in a really tough spot, and sure enough, they're paying for it. Here comes a luck. So the Kiwis protesting at the path of the Swedes. Yeah, and that's going to be a green flag, I think. Uh, the Kiwis did a luff. Artemis Racing rolled right into attack. They both did what they had to do in that situation. But the bottom line is, Artemis Racing set themselves up to get past with really just a bad tactical move. They didn't tack in the correct spot about half a leg ago. Here's the luff. Burling, he's heading up, he's heading up, he has the right away. He pushes the button before he even get close. <laughs> Sorry, it's boat rage. It's boat rage. <laughs> it's called the Hollywood. He's trying to, he's talking to Richard Slater. Come on, Richard, help me out here. <laughs> Little muffin. These guys are practiced. They did exactly what they had to do there. They tacked away, but here comes this key cross. Starboard tack boat, Artemis Racing. Port tack boat, Emirates Team New Zealand, both likely laying the gate. This is where it always gets interesting. Looks to me like Emirates Team New Zealand might get across here if they get across. Easy cross. Pretty good stuff for us on the down one. Really hammering their way up to the gate. Having come from behind, something they seem remarkably adept at doing. And again, just look, those holes are barely moving from the height that they started the mark rounding at. Inch perfect, and we have a split course with the Swedes heading in the other direction. Who is going to find the better wind pressure? Well, that's a good question, Paul K. Our which side of the race course looks a little better? We got a nice split. Yeah, usually this side that Artemis is on has a little more pressure, a little, more, little less land to windward of it, but uh, I think the Kiwis will come out. They might lose a little bit of lead, but they're pretty comfortable, I think. They did a, well, Artemis made a mistake, as you said, up that beat, and they're paying for it. Good angle, pressure hitting at this angle. So this was a few moments ago. Keep a close eye on these sailors here because um, it's not easy crossing that platform, as you can see. Hold on, baby. Bring on for dear life. The last thing they need is to lose another man. That wire is, it's not actually a wire. That's a carbon fiber cable that's used to actually hold the mast up and looks like it held a human being up instead there. 100% fly time for the New Zealanders and look just how far ahead they find themselves at this point. You give them a sniff at the lead, and they just extend, they just dominate. And again, I, we keep harping on it. And I started to tell the story before for Peter Burling, not only does he put pressure on himself in that starting line, but I'm sure he's sick of being asked about it. Still pretty, pretty happy right there. I still haven't had it answered. What happens if you go over 100%? Yeah, I think they suddenly burst into flames. <laughs> it's not interesting to see Peter Burling's heart rate's up at 81%, and that's the same as... Well, it's not too far shy of Blair Tuke, is it? Who's uh, hard at work on the... On the pedals. from the Kiwis, which will take them through this gate nice and clean in one. You give these guys any sniff, and they extend. A faster boat always extends like this, you know? And Certainly those light air boards don't seem, seem to be affecting them very much right now with regard to pace. It's about 10 
one and a half knots of wind speed on the water right now. Yeah, yeah, no sign of the instability really from the Swedes that we saw in that previous race. They've, they've looked pretty solid, but having been overtaken, they're facing a real job here. Just a slight yeah. little right hand shift. I think this is a it's a puffy yeah. day. This is as much about the pressure, where these pressure lines are coming from. They're kind of scattered all over the race course. Little rain squalls coming through still, dark clouds, a little patch of blue sky. It's a it's a very interesting day for the weatherman, that's for sure. Short, clipped messages from Peter Berlin. Everybody just seems to be bang in tune. It's what's called a loose cover. They didn't tack directly in front of Artemis, but certainly well up to weather. A bit of a controlling tack. And, uh, you know, Paul, every time... Paul Carrot out in the water. Every time Team New Zealand gets ahead, they extend. Whereas when they're behind, they tend to kind of maintain. Is that the sign of a slightly faster boat? Yeah, Kenny, uh, as you and I know, that is the sign. And uh, I guess the slighter, slightly less wind speed in this race suits their bigger boards uh, just that little bit better. And, you know, the first tack by Artemis uh, out of the Lured Mark was very strange, as I'm sure you noticed. I mean, they tacked in the safe behind position, which no one ever does. So I, they did two tacks to uh, New Zealand's one there, and that's just coughing up another 80 meters. So the, the ploy of using those bigger boards bearing fruit as the wind just dissipates a little bit through the afternoon camp. Yeah, for sure. These guys are also rumored along the waterfront of all the teams to have maybe the most forgiving setup. So their light air boards might be a little better in, in a slightly wider range. Same thing with their heavy air boards. And it's also talked about that they might have tips on their dagger boards that they can actually replace and let's say shrink a light air board or extend a heavy air board on a given day. Between races? No, never, not a chance. It's always before they leave the dock and I believe they have to make all those choices by nine o'clock in the morning. But they can hedge, it might give them a little chance to hedge their bets a bit, you know. On a day like this, where it's just quite unpredictable. Varied wing speeds, as we've seen throughout the afternoon so far. Yeah, it, well, you and I were out on, on the water this morning early, and it was blowing 23, 24 knots at times. It was, it was very wet as well. Very wet. Can testify to that. Good sandwiches, though. Good breakfast sandwiches. I ate a lot of food. Hi, right. Well, my socks are still wet, so if you could do something about that, that would be great. Kiwis, in the meantime, making serene progress. Pretty high up on the water, but still swinging those bows round really quick. The average wind speed dropping down to 10 and a half knots. <laughs> Certainly going to see the Kiwis get a little bit better as it gets lighter, as reported. They definitely seem the most comfortable in the lighter air, don't they? Even when we were in the round robin stage, the qualifying stages, they were the ones thriving when the wind speeds were only at six, seven, eight knots. Right, right at the bottom of that wind range. There's no doubt that I think. That's when the Kiwis strike fear in, in most of the rest of the fleet. They seem to have more stability in that bottom, in that very, very bottom end wind range. So one more downwind leg for the New Zealanders to navigate. And they look to have plenty of clear water between themselves and the Swedes at this point. And what about this kink? Yeah, the big old kink in the board. That's, that's what we've all been talking about for quite a while. 
it really couldn't be more different than the dead straight boards of Artemis Racing. Both are obviously accomplishing great things. But yeah, you look at the design, and it's it's really quite quite interesting and quite strange. Look at how these guys they they round the mark and start going five, eight, sometimes ten knots faster than the boat still going upwind, and how it. Uh, a small to medium sized lead just expands so dramatically and so quickly for that boat that's ahead. Uh, we might do it in two. You go all the way, worth trying. That's the right turn, so it's three. Yeah. Setting up. Six hundred meters now. It's a procession for the Kiwis from here. Not sure that's the word he's imagining just at this moment. I don't think he's seen any of the race yet. Somebody, somebody yep. suggested that maybe they should paint some road markings on in front of him so he feels a little more at home. So what's going on here with the uh, the forearm, Ken? So a lot of it's boats. Like a, well, iPhone it could even something. be an, an iPhone-type device. Uh, it's Obviously, we're looking on the forearm right here. It's A lot of boats now have uh, wireless kind of heads-up displays that key instrumentation and, and whatever whoever I don't even know who that was whatever that position is you have key instrumentation that is critical to your job it could be a display that says hydraulic pressure it could be a display that says true wind direction uh, course to the mark how many laps you've done I mean it could be a, anything and but it's a vital piece of information that whoever that was they need at a moment's notice So one more gate to navigate, and then the blast reach to the finish for Emirates Team New Zealand, who have been displaying all their proficiency and their prowess in this race. Another masterclass, really. Get them in front, and they are launched. <laughs> See, they're talking about. He must have an issue if he's heading for home. How many, uh, how many legs were still on? They were just talking about. Are, are you sure it's a six up? Yep, it's six up. That, six. Well, that means six legs and, and then to the finish. Always good to be discussing that as you are a couple of hundred meters from the it's finish line. What's well, going to the Swedes? They're, something's uh, wrong with the Swedes. We they're going very it. much in the wrong direction at this point. You got to get a camera on the Swedes. Clearly, they have a problem. I'm looking out on the race course right now, and I didn't realize they had careened off. But clearly, they have an issue. Trouble for Sweden at this point, but the Kiwis back in front in the playoff final. Their boat speed so impressive, and another really good example of their calm and their composure in chasing down opponents. So they lead by three points to two, and the Swedes have officially retired from the race. I wonder if this is significant in terms of some kind of technical problem. We'll be looking for people crawling all over the boat with regard to uh, if we do think it's a technical issue or if they just decided, let's take a little rest, let's, let's take some rest time. Looks like it's game on out there because these two coming together really tight. Flag it, flag it, flag it. There's the protest from the New Zealanders. You hear flag it, flag it, flag it. That means certainly Emirates Team New Zealand thought they had an overlap. And clearly, Chief Umpire Richard Slater did not think they had an overlap. He's the guy with the final say. Only 20 seconds to the start. This is going to very quickly turn into time and distance. Emirates Team New Zealand, though, this time, going from that higher speed side of the line. Looks like they might have timed this really nicely, the New Zealanders. They are up, and they are onto their foils, and they are in front. 
Please, the Swedish boat speed is picking up quite drastically on the inside of them, beyond 40 knots. There is no doubt, Paul called this, Paul Kayer in the water called this earlier, there is no doubt that these lighter air foils are slower on a reach. They might be better upwind, they might be even okay downwind, but on a reach, look at these guys, like, they're gonna sail, they're sailing off the island right now, off the race course. It's become a real strategy of Artemis racing. Push them way away from this line and then just try to stretch out their gap. I'm sorry, but this could be a rerun of pretty much every race we've seen so far. Well, they are driving the Kiwis further and further away from the first mark at this point. And you just get the impression that they know they've got to make hay on this first reach. They've got to build as big a lead as they possibly can to keep the Kiwis at arm's length because the New Zealanders will feel they can reel them in from pretty much anywhere. This kind of distance is going to be nothing for them in their mind. Here we go again. Kiwis will just keep it close, keep the pressure on, see if Artemis cracks. It's, it's really that simple. Going out to Paul Caird on the water. Paul, why do you think that the lighter air, longer foils of New Zealand show up really as a deficiency on that first reach, but they really don't seem to on the run. You would think the reach and the run have kind of similar similar modes for dagger boards. Yeah, well, I think as you know, Kenny, the uh, the run, you're BMG sailing a little bit, so you, you take it down. You're not quite as high speed as you are on that 100-degree uh, reach, so that's the highest speed leg of the whole race the, from the start to the first mark, and that's where the Kiwis are paying for it the most. So the wind's still about 11 knots overall, so let's see how the rest of the race pans out for them. That 11 knot alley is right at the tra transition where most of these teams kind of toss a coin whether uh, which ones are going to use. Round gate two, Swedes in front, setting the pace, setting the agenda, and now they have to make sure that they keep their foot on the throat of the Kiwis. And that has proved a very difficult thing for them to achieve. Zealanders. They're not interested in sailing close to the Swedes. They want to head off early, get out into the open water, hunt down that extra bit of breeze that they might find. I think that left-hand mark was certainly favored, more of an upwind mark, so they chose not to split at that bottom gate to follow them around and then tack. So they didn't give up the distance at the gate, but they got kind of a semi-split here. They got free air, that's for sure. between everybody there, but Kelly Tallin, the sole grinder up in the 90s. Nathan Outridge's heart's pumping fast enough for a helmsman at 81. Wing trimmer Ian Jensen. Okay. Set up soft on port, hard starboard. Potential dial. Who's got the easiest job? Early, all right. <laughs> you and me. <laughs> Early. Okay. Early. This is getting close. There was a left-hand shift going up this leg. Artemis Racing actually started a dial down there. Kiwis got right back into it on a bit of a left-hand wind shift. Kiwis did a big dip, thinking they were going to get dialed even harder and kind of gave up a bit of distance, gave that distance right back again. There's a great race brewing here, you feel. Very little in it. Decent wind speed, great boat speed. Yeah, I think the breeze is sl going slightly back right again. I tell you, the Kiwis, either they're playing the wind shifts better or they're flying because they seem a little higher and a little faster on this leg. Go back and look at this tack and cross. The Kiwis tack to port tack. Immediately, Artemis dials right down at them. 90 degrees, Kiwis go way low and actually come off their foils a little bit there and give up eight or 10 boat lengths on that dial down. So very effective 
dial down maneuver by Nathan Outeridge and Artemis Racing. Still not much in it though. Tacking right on top. Wing wash will come into effect here for sure. So this is where the Swedes try to spoil the air of the New Zealanders alongside them and a little bit in the slipstream. Looking to try to ensure that they don't get a clear run at it, but Kiwis are not interested. Yeah. It's not like car racing where you can do a little bump draft, that it's it's an effective being behind. But... are going to think we're just simply quicker upwind. Let's keep this close and we can get them on the next upwind leg. Keep it close if you're a Kiwi fan. That's what you're thinking. Pretty big split here right now, though. Big split on the race course. A wind shift when the boats get this far apart absolutely magnifies the situation. There go the Swedes. Good pressure Tacking coming. One final time. The New Zealanders have done similarly on the they other side of the course. Easy. There is not going to be a huge Might amount in this as they head to gate right? three. But it looks yeah. like the left-hand mark it. at the top of the gate. It looks like that mark right up here is closer. So it'll be interesting to see if Artemis tacks for it or if they continue all the way across. They're crossing ahead of New Zealand easy, but it sure looks like the, the wind has shifted on the race course, and both boats are going to round these marks at very similar moments. Sure enough, almost exactly the same turn time. Nip it up. Paul, these two. Let's, let's go. Paul Kayard, has there been a general trend to the wind going in one direction or another? It looks like the race course is a little tilted right now. Yeah, Kenny, you're you're right. The wind is uh, skewed to the left of the axis a little bit. Uh, but I'm also pretty impressed. I think the Kiwis are going really fast because they, when they went in the right corner on that last part of the beat, it's right behind the highest land around. And I kind of thought they might get light over there, but they didn't. So, um, yes, the course is skewed, but the Kiwis are fast. Swedish boat unquestionably our noisiest, noisiest boat in the fleet, not just because of the communications on board, the, uh, the talkative nature of their crew, but it tends to make a really high-pitched howling noise. And they've made the big gain on this side of the race course, so not only did that split at the top gate work as far as getting the Kiwis around the gate mark, almost identical time, but here they make a yet another pass. Upwind and downwind, they're going really fast right now. Neat and tidy on the jibe for Artemis Racing. Kiwis, though, really flying at the far end of the course. 100% fly time for both crews at the moment. Holds out of the water on the foils all the way. Always thought this was going to happen. As the event went along, the boats would just become more and more perfectly sailed. Numbers are good. And that means boat speed comes more into play. You take essentially that 100% on both boats means that nobody's really made that fatal mistake. So boat speed is the thing that takes over. Look at this. These guys dive directly in front. Artemis, will Artemis split to the other side or follow them in? They're going to have to make that play. Right here, right now, they're following them around. Boat race. This is the boat race. So, so tight on their tail, the Swedes. Within two meters going 25, 30 knots amongst friends. And now bearing away on the tap, the Swedes. 
board and listen to these guys for a minute. That top left mark is Fabian. on the audio. Kiwis just look fast. So the New Zealand is just this very slick, well-oiled machine, totally confident in their boat and their boat handling. The way everybody interacts. Both boats going very similar speeds through the water, but I'm maintaining that the VMG or the Velocity Made Good is much better for Team New Zealand right now. So we just saw attack on Sweden, but both boats are going a similar boat speed through the water. Let's wait for these two tacks to happen and that bottom number on both sides is the key number. Once the boats settle in, let's see who has a better VMG toward the mark. The Kiwis just look like they're going about the same speed, but just higher. Higher toward the wind, pointing closer to the wind than Artemis racing all the time. One and a half legs of this race remaining. And look at the Kiwis there. Oh, he told up. us to keep an eye on that bottom number, Kenny. It was picking up from a New Zealand perspective. They did. They, as the boat settled in on, on the tacks, they were three or four knots faster. I mean, usually in the boats that Paul Gaird and I have sailed our whole lives, Paul, a tenth of a knot was a beautiful thing. These guys are talking three, four, five knots. Yeah, it's a whole different uh, ball game for sure. Uh, a tenth of a knot was a huge deal in our day. <laughs> Just higher. I mean, you look at you look at the angle that Team New Zealand. They just they were just they're just pointing higher all the time than Artemis racing. Are we now at the stage of the race, Ken, where the Swedes are going to have to hope that the Kiwis make a mess somewhere? And it's not something the Red Boat is apt to do very often. We've seen that throughout this entire series so far. It's a fine line between waiting for the guy to make a mistake in front of you and pure desperation. And as a tactician, you kind of have to make that call at some stage. We gotta, we gotta try something, or let's just stick with him. It's getting towards make or break time for the Swedish crew. This could really change things, this race. The New Zealanders leading 3-2. The difference, quite obviously, between a 4-2 lead overnight and three points apiece if the Swedes pull it off. Just enormous. So much pressure coming to bear on Nathan Outridge and the rest of his team at this point. Dagger board, dagger board choices have just become such an integral part of this America's Cup. Slower on that first reach behind every single race at mark number one for Emirates Team New Zealand so far. And right now they're cruising off to a 4-2 series lead. Really kind of unheard of. Down gate five. And down wind for the last time in the race. Time running out for Artemis Racing here. The Kiwis have set the agenda. They forced the pace of the race pretty much from the outset. Certainly down the Swedes to very good effect after that first mark. And they've got them where they want them. Hard to see them tripping up from here. 
they have gone Still follows, every time the Kiwis get ahead, they just extend. Always the sign of a quicker boat. Long port tack. It really takes away the options here. If you're Sweden, you know, let's go back out to Paul for a second. If you're Sweden, what do you do? It's not much. Uh, yeah, they can only they can only hope for some kind of a breakdown or a massive screw up by Team New Zealand. I think Penny, you know, it's going to be one jive and in probably for New Zealand. And uh, yeah, it's tough. They're going to have to regroup tonight. And come out swinging. As an old boss of mine told me a long time ago, hope is not a strategy that you want to really rely on. Yeah, the Any effort the is still going in, powerful. but the hopes are fading, and fading fast at this stage. The New Zealanders, so well organized, so well drilled, so confident, and cruising across the top of the water. Cyclos certainly seem to have given them some sort of edge. And as we've discussed through the opening fortnight here, it might be only just one of a number of different little edges that are adding up to their excellence on the water. That's exactly correct. There'll be one more jibe through this gate, and actually, it looks like they might have to jibe a couple times to get to the finish line. The finish line is actually really dead downwind from this gate, from this final gate. So without a big mishap by Emirates Team New Zealand, this race looks pretty over. So the final gate, they're Get over there, mate. cutting Get over it pretty there. fine. And that's yeah, just about as animated as you'll hear, Peter oh. Burling. Well, there's the mishap that Artemis Racing is looking for right now. Are they out of hydraulic pressure to be able to do these two jives very quickly. Well, the Artemis Street is right down now for the Kiwis, only at 15, 16 knots. Artemis screaming up from behind. Yeah, easy. Wait up. Full wait up. And now it is anybody's. Would you believe the Swedes right back in the hunt from out of nowhere? Will the New Zealanders manage to hang on? There is absolutely nothing in it. New Zealand tearing across the water. They are just about going to nose it. Oh, my goodness, what a breathless finish. There is the protest from the Swedish boat. Is that going to make a difference at this point? A bit of a desperation protest. I, don't, I didn't see anything both over the monitors or live or, live or on the monitor that the Kiwis did wrong there. Still no decision on the penalty, so... Hey, uh, Trace, one, are you close? We'll wait and see what the decision is from Richard Slater, the chief umpire. Kiwis are uh, celebrating, and there is no penalty, we understand. So the New Zealanders win the race, they've won it clean, and they are now in pole position in the Challenger playoff final, a pivotal race. Sweden now match point down, and one more race will do it for the Kiwis. Sure enough, Artemis gaps off. They're going to try time and distance from up above Emirates Team New Zealand. So maybe the uh, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, so to speak, is beginning to diminish now as they think about timing this start. Nine seconds, eight seconds. The Swedes just going to have to slow up a little bit here because they cannot afford to do what they did in this race previously when the penalty was awarded to them. This time they're clean off the line. Who can get up on their foils the quickest? Sometimes that what we call a low speed angle, the bottom of the start box in this light air actually can be a little quicker. Aiming straight for the mark right now. This is absolutely a flat out boat speed contest. Not much in it. Barely any at all. Peter Burling keeping a keen eye on his opposite man, Nathan Ashridge, yeah. as they reach to the first mark. And going a little quicker. We haven't seen that. We're going to see a little up. We're going to see Nathan Outeridge actually get a little taste of his own medicine. This is what he's done to Burling several times. That little up and then stretch out around the mark. Very well played by Peter Burling. So this time it is the Kiwis who reach the first mark in front as they did in this race a little earlier on today that was abandoned. But prior to that, the Swedes, six out of six at the start. 
So Berling turning the tables. Can he make it count? Remember when it was blowing about this much in the first race, on this first run, Emirates Team New Zealand really stretched out. Part of that could have been wind shift, wind pressure, and a nice stable jive by Artemis. That's a good sign for Artemis fans. They had a nice stable jive that first time around. You know these guys can jive in this condition. That was the voice of Peter Gerling. Massive game here if we can get into one. I think they just have more pressure down on that side of the race course right now. So they're trying desperately to reach that gate without maneuvering any further. I'm happy to go forward. He's almost getting down as well. No more jibes, but he recognizes that Nathan Atheridge might not be too far away from achieving that himself. But look at the discrepancy in the boat speeds. Yeah, they, there's just more pressure on that side of the course. He did a really yeah, nice job being patient there. Favored, so if we can get down, it's good. Getting and himself then into a pretty so dominant position early on in the race. Wow. A little bit more coming to here. Here it is. Big speed difference here, Ali. Six knots. Another pole on your left shoulder. And it's consistent, isn't it? It really is. It's a little better angle. They're coming up to this gate at a slightly better angle. Artemis trying to get low, bear off. See that, that higher angle. He's, he's angled up and Artemis is angled down. That inherently in light air just creates a big boat speed difference. And you can see it there, five, six knots. One of the options for the Swedes from here. Are they going to make this in one or are they going to have to jive again? By their angle, by their depth, that they're trying to sail away from the wind. Looks to me like they're trying to make the gate instead of splitting away. Look how slow they are coming into the mark. Yeah, that is the problem with taking it so tight that the Kiwis are steaming away at 26 and a half knots. They're actually faster upwind than Artemis was downwind going into that mark. And we saw that a lot yesterday, didn't we? Upwind speed, really strong from Emirates Team New Zealand throughout the three races yesterday, and they've really got off to a cracker. Heavy driving, heavy driving is the Plenty to do here already for the Swedish crew. Interesting that the Swedes tack. I mean, honestly, it's kind of like they did this yesterday. They tack right in line. I mean, essentially, they allow, they tack into a cover. You know, instead of Emirates Team New Zealand having to tack to cover them, they tack directly downwind and completely in control of Emirates Team New Zealand at this stage. Interesting move. They wanted to go to the left. Why didn't they split and go to the other gate? I'm, I'm a little confused by this move, I have to admit. Not too hard, we're going well. So a lead, a healthy lead, and the fly time decent as well. The wind speed's picked up, by the way, from around about eight knots at the start of this race. It's now 11. Remember, the Kiwis are 100% win rate when they're first to that first mark. And that spells trouble for the Swedes at this point. If you had just analyzed the statistics, although we've seen how one mistake can cost teams, and it very, very nearly cost the Kiwis at the, the final mark of the final race yesterday. Peter Burling nearly blew it. The kid doesn't have a pulse. I mean, you should seriously check his heart rate, because I don't think he ever breathes. I mean, it, it's just calm under pressure. Looking around, nice day. Brought my sunblock. Yeah, one minute now on the boundary. Yeah, we've spoken about it before, Ken. This, this uh, yeah. sharing of the responsibility the between himself and, uh, and Glenn Ashby yeah, in particular. Probably had the option. Yeah. He's, he's gone, but we'll go to the slip. See the marks in front of us there, like right? Yeah, the way they have shared out the duties has really been working for the the kiwis it has been a, a proper team operation no one man has huge responsibility on his shoulders peter burling very much the the focal point clearly but everybody knows their part and 
again, a, another very precise tack. So stable and heading for gate three with a really healthy lead. We talked earlier about the crew change on the Kiwi boat. They actually swapped out to Simon Van Belthoven right at the last minute. So I think they thought this breeze was coming up and they might have put the, he's the, remember, he's the, he's the cyclist. What about this, this wind shift we're seeing? Top yeah. left of your screen, the, uh, the indicator suggesting it's really shifted to the right. Yeah, I, I think it's shifted a little bit to the right. Not crazy like that first leg. Certainly, I'm uh, sorry, the first race we had today, the canceled race, that's when we were seeing massive wind shifts. We still think, they still look to me like they're still pretty squared up on the race course. So that could be a, a wind indicator actually from a different part of the race course. He needs it shifting. No, that, you, no, I see. Yeah, there is a good wind shift. They're going to jive and almost lay all the way down. So I, I believe that wind indicator now. I was trying to doubt. Never, like a pilot says, never doubt your instruments. I was doubting the instruments, and that was absolutely the wrong thing to do. So you think they're almost going to try to make this in in one stretch? Look, the they're, yeah, they're going all the way down the race course here. They're going all the way down the race course in one, so that was a quick little jive, and they're going to have a, a long stretch down the race course. See that? They're, they're almost heading for the mark. There's the line all the way down the course. So that what that tells all of us in the sailing world is that there has been a large right-hand wind shift. I guarantee you, once they went through that gate, Ian Murray will be scampering to move the gate that they just went through to the right side of the course and square it back up again. That's what great regatta directors and... Uh, that's what they do. They just shift. They, they shift this course around. But we, we never even know how much they shift the course around. Almost between every leg. So the Kiwis flying. Look at it again. They've found extra pressure out there, and they are going consistently five, six knots quicker than the Swedes. And at the moment, the race is theirs. It really is. It's there for the taking. What do you do if you're Nathan Adridge at this point? Boy, oh boy, this is a big lead. And not just a big lead, but a boat against the boat that's going very, this is, oh, this is no fluke. I'm moving the top mark to the right. You can even hear it in Ian Person's voice right now. Anyway. Just an enormous space opened up between these two. Surely the New Zealanders can't be stopped from here. Surely their name will be confirmed as the America's Cup challenger. Their form right now, absolutely impeccable. A lot of big rain clouds around still, though, yeah. as every Kiwi fan on the planet knows. This is very familiar to what they had going in San Francisco. Lots of rain showers around. I'm not trying to be a downer here, but it's still a precarious weather conditions out of the race course, to say the very least. Well, the Swedes are going to have to hope for something pretty dramatic from this position, whether it is a change in the weather, a shift in the wind that suddenly propels them forwards at high speed, some sort of calamity to befall the Kiwis. Are they closing? This is a really interesting. The, the wing here has very little camber to it. Glenn Ashby runs around jumps into the camber adjustment or some sign of adjustment and watch this watch when he goes back up again the camber pops full maybe we can see the upward angle something was going on with the wing and why it couldn't have what uh, in, in sail terms sail depth to it for some reason it was very flat and he went and made some quick adjustment all of a sudden the camber popped very deep the angle between the front and back element all of a sudden uh, took shape Ashby, 
is a very busy man right now. That's the leech line on the jib. We love that shot, by the way. The leech line on the jib is probably fluttering a little bit. So watch when Ashby goes back up on the high side. Watch the camber. Watch the wing. And all of a sudden, it's going to pop full right there. All of a sudden, tons of depth is in, is added to it. So that's that's fascinating. He something he made a change to it somehow. 500 meter leads down to 350. So the deficit cut. But the, be able to get to the marks of one here. size of the race course is uh, against the Swedes at this point. Just one and a half legs meaningfully before the reach to the finish. At the moment then, it is all New Zealand for all the tinkering and the trouble that they may or may not be having with their wing. The Swedes are playing catch up at the moment. They're staring right down the barrel. We're going to have to move quite fast. But it's 30 seconds in this high mode. 18. They have squared up the race course. So we are, uh, if you're an Artemis fan, it's not quite as skewed as that last run looked like. Big split on the race course right now. The kid doesn't seem to mind being on this side of the race course, so why should we doubt at this stage? <laughs> I think they should go adjust the leech line again. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Go, go, go! That bow down trim, we talked about a lot early on. It does a bunch of things, aerodynamics. They get the rudders out of the water, the, the drag of the rudders out of the water. And again, we're seeing a big discrepancy in speed, aren't we? Four knots, something of that nature. Four. Easy lay here, boys. I Play guarantee you. Really Let's go famous. down to Joey Newton on the water. Joey, I have a feeling your boys are all sitting in that yep. dark room that you've described, oh, okay. their, their little watching room back at Oracle Team USA watching a really fast Kiwi boat right now. Yeah, they sure are, Ken. Um, Boys are all in our little room, the dojo we call it, they'll all be watching this and yeah, it's pretty impressive with the Kiwis. They're on the light air boards and they're just streaking away from Artemis. So, you know, Artemis has got to be hoping for something to go wrong to the Kiwi boat, but I really can't see it happening from here. So one more downwind leg. Emirates Team New Zealand seemingly cruising to victory and cruising into the America's Cup match itself as the challenger. That's what's on the line right here, the Swedes at the moment are heading for the exit door. They're miles away. They are looking buried at this stage. Peter Burling and the rest of his Kiwi crew, or they will turn their heads at various different points and they will have to really strain to see the Swedes who are nowhere near being yeah, in their slipstream. Yeah, it'll be a reach up. Left hand to a reach. Not even in the same picture. Dominant. Sideways. As dominant. Okay, ten seconds. And, and this is a, an Artemis boat that earlier today we were saying really looked stable and good in this light air. Two, Just shows Kiwis have a bit of a, a mode sometimes Five. that are just scary. If you're a competitor, it's just scary. Time running out, and there must be a slow realization from the Swedish crew at this point that their adventure here in Bermuda is drawing to a close. And a team that, like all the teams in this event, has just been just solid and great guys and very uh, open to us, and they've been wonderful to this for the sport. There's nothing not to like yeah, about right, Artemis right. Racing and every single member of their team, yeah. Torbjörn Tornquist, the principal and owner of the team, yeah. class yeah. act. Nothing to be ashamed of. They're, they're losing to a better team right now, Ali. He's back down. 
Still putting it in. Still putting in those hard yards, but the New Zealanders are bearing down on victory. It's a fun feeling right now on board this boat. Now, I think we said they, there's no way they could screw this up yesterday, too. And goodness gracious, they almost gave all their fans a heart attack. One more dive, and they're going to come that's zipping hard. across to this finish line that's... You know, I've said it before, I, I think it's almost a pitching wedge to them, feeling a little stronger today. To the, to the finish line right off of our booth. They're through that final mark. They have turned for home. The New Zealanders now on this victory sprint down the runway, close to the shoreline in front of thousands of fans who are in the grandstand. They're all along the edge of the shore and they have witnessed a terrific performance. The Kiwis absolutely flying home and flying into the America's Cup match itself as the challenger. And the rematch, the rematch against the Americans is on. 2013, San Francisco and all. The New Zealanders will get a chance to right those wrongs and put things straight. They have seen off the Swedes. Celebrations of a very good job done and you can just see what it means there will be celebrations to 9,000 miles away four and a half million people in the north and the south island of New Zealand will let out a collective cheer and applaud Peter Burling Glenn Ashby Blair Tuke and all those others on board the Swedes are down and out undone ultimately by some inconsistencies, fluctuations in form, and ultimately outraced by the Kiwis. It's the New Zealand flag which is hoisted highest. So well done to Peter Burling, Glenn Ashby, Blair Tuke, Andy Maloney, Josh Jr., and Simon Van Velthoven, not to mention Guy N. Dean and the part that he played.